Good evening, folks, and welcome back to the Saturday Evening Gospel Podcast, 7 p.m. I'm John, and tonight I will be your host for this episode of The Jesus Experience, wherein we invite people who have encountered Christ in all His glory and majesty to give testimony of how He has changed their lives for the better, cleansing their hearts and lighting their worlds. Our guest for tonight is actually a student from Goodheart Christian Academy who used to be a terrible cheater until he had the Jesus experience. Let's let him tell the whole story himself. Presenting Peter Perez. Thanks, John. I'm really glad to be here. Wonderful. Now, if you don't mind, I'm sure the audience is dying to know your full story. I mean, I know I am. Of course, I'd be honored to tell you. One day, while I was doing my paces, my math pace, a terribly difficult problem laid before me. About half an hour of examining the examples and studying the equation, I just still couldn't get it. Soon, a terrible thought entered my mind. I thought about asking to score my work, when in reality I'd be scanning the score key for the answers. As I stood at the scoring station, waiting for all the teachers to be too busy to notice me, my classmate Ruth was scoring her work beside me. To my dismay, she noticed that the pages of my pace weren't even filled. She riskily began to speak to me. Hey Peter, what are you doing? Don't tell me you're cheating. What? No way! I said my, uh, my pages. Yeah, my pages were just opened at the wrong area. You're at the first page, Pete. Alright, fine. I admit it. I'm cheating. How dare you? You know that's wrong. Aside from the demerits you could get, that's strictly against the law of God. I'm sure you'd understand. Besides, my intent is still to learn and then use my applied knowledge for God's glory. But before I could even get to cheating, Sir Jerry had caught us speaking. Hey, you two. What are you doing talking at the scoring station? Peter, why is there no answer in your pace? You're cheating! Sir, I, uh, uh y you know, I, uh... No, 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 Peter. It's turned to your office. You know the penalty is for cheating. Being caught red-handed, naturally, I did as my teacher said. When I returned to my office, I had realized that it was all Ruth's fault as to why this happened. I even cursed her under my breath and swore some kind of vengeance. And yes, I know, it sounds very childish. Later that day, I refused to speak with my friend because of the hate and anger I held for her in my heart. Whenever she'd try to approach me, to even apologize to me for something I know she did not do, I could only give her the cold shoulder. So how did you reconcile? I'm awfully interested in how you two became friends again, if you did, that is. Well, let's continue. As the day went on, I prepared excuses, explanations, and other faulty lies I conceived for when our teacher would speak to me or otherwise give me the detention slip. But to my surprise, it actually never happened. At dismissal that same day, my curiosity drove me to ask our teacher when he'd like to speak with me. I've decided to issue a warning instead. Why? I asked. Ruth told me that it would only harden your feelings toward us. And seeing that this was the first time I caught you, I decided against punishing you. Shocked by your intervention, I asked. So this is all her doing? Mostly, but don't forget the whole purpose of this. It won't be like this next time. Thank you, sir. I uh, said before leaving. What a kind thing this Ruth has done for you. Anyway, what happened next? Right. After leaving our teacher's office, I thought about seeing Ruth and expressing my gratitude to her. But something seemed to stop me. It was like I knew that it would be the right thing to do, but I just couldn't do it. Looking back at it now, I know for a fact that this was pride. Pride cometh before the fall, they say. And they're right. Afterwards, Ruth began messaging me, asking me to forgive her for getting me into trouble. I ignored her. Several days after the cheating incident, Ruth invited me to go to church with her. Feeling greatly burdened to finally go to church again, and nearly a year of not going, I relented. How delightful. So, uh, Peter, how did this go? First of all, Ruth introduced me to the pastor who would be preaching that evening. We then got to our seats, and like the pastor said, the service began. The first person on the stage was a young woman who gave a testimony of her meeting Christ. Then, the song leaders began to sing such beautiful hymns that the entire congregation joined them. When Pastor Joshua began preaching the word, I felt as if the message was intended for me. Like the Lord had willed for the pastor to think of preaching that message on the very day he made a way for me to go to that very church to hear that very message. It was just so beautiful. What a blessing, isn't it? 
how God can work in mysterious ways. God is truly great, am I right? He is. And it was that moment that Christ himself came and spoke to me personally. I gave my life to Christ that very night. How amazing. Do continue with your story, Peter. Sure. After that service, I was so gladdened by this revelation that God cared for me and he loved me and that he'd guide me in whatever I do as long as I asked. Ruth, too, was incredibly happy that I decided to go to church with her. I'm so glad that you enjoyed it. I'll be praying for you, Peter. Bye! And we parted ways. As I walked home, a thought kept nagging my mind that I'd forgotten something. I checked my things and reassured myself that I hadn't. But the thought remained. I finally remembered it. I hadn't thanked her. Knowing that it was too late at night to go to her personally, I did the next best thing and frantically texted her through my phone. I typed, Ruth, I'm incredibly sorry for being so mean in the past few days. Thank you so much for inviting me to church tonight. Please forgive me. See you tomorrow. I anxiously waited for her reply, and it finally came. Peter, I'm so blessed to have met you. Of course, I forgive you for being slightly mean, for now I see God's purpose in it. See you tomorrow. After that heartwarming message, she began typing again, then it stopped. What happened? Was there an error? I thought that too. But then, the following morning, I discovered the terrible truth. As I prepared for school, I learned that she got into a car crash, and the Lord took her home that night. Oh my gosh, I, I have no words. I'm, I'm so deeply sorry, Peter. I can't ever imagine anything like that happening to my friends, but we never know what could happen today or tomorrow. I guess we can just give it to the Lord in prayer. Yeah, that's the best thing we could do. Through all this, I learned that our lives are precious and that we shouldn't so meekly throw it away by committing sin after sin, even when we know it's all wrong. I know that now, and I will serve the Lord exactly how Ruth did. God used her to bring me into His kingdom, and once she had served her purpose, the Lord called her home. Now it's my turn to serve His purpose. It's my turn to share his word, to share his gospel, to share his light. That's all I have for you tonight, and thank you. What a heartwarming story. Thank you so much, Peter, for coming to the show and for sharing your testimony of how Christ lit your world. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all we have for you tonight. Thank you for listening to the Jesus Experience. I've been your host, John. God bless you, and see you next time.